and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we are going to handle some problems involving square roots. Okay, the first problem, and we're not going to use calculators for this because we don't need calculators. We can use our brains. All right, so the first, brains only. So the first uh, problem we have the square root of 27 over 1. I can rewrite that as the square root of 27 over the square root of 1 using the quotient property. Right. And then I can use the product property to say that the square root of uh, 27 is the same as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. I know the square root of 1 is just 1. And then I can simplify further the square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 3 is just going to be 3 in this case. But <clears throat> if I ask you to solve for this and provide me with an answer, you can just use 1.7 for the square root of 3 over 1. And that's simply 3 times the square root of 3. Okay, second problem, I have the square root of 49 over the square root of 9. And I can rewrite that as the square root of, using the quotient property, the square root of 49 over the square root of 9. I know the square root of 49 is going to be 7. I know the square root of 9 is 3. And so that's my answer. Again, I have the square root of 100 over 25. That's the same using the uh, quotient property as the square root of 100 over the square root of 25. That's equal to 10 over 5, and that is equal to 2. Okay, some more problems. I have the square root of 4 over the square root of 5 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. Well, I know that the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, I know the square root of 4 is going to be equal to 2. So I end up with 2 root 3, and I know that the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is simply 5. So I end up with 2 root 3 over 5. And the second problem, uh, now I have, again, a radical in the denominator. I'm going to use the conjugate of this value to figure out what the solution is. So I have 1 over 3 plus uh, the square root of 3 times the conjugate, which is 3 minus root 3 over 3 minus root 3. And I end up with 3 minus root 3 on the top, and I end up with a squared minus b squared on the bottom. So 9, which is a squared, minus b squared, uh, which is going to be uh, root 3. So 9 minus 3, it's going to end up being 6. So 3 minus root 3 over 6. Now, <clears throat> I can't simplify this further because I need to have a value or a factor <clears throat> of 6 other than 1 in order, in order to reduce the numerator. So I'm simply left with uh, what you see here. Okay, so now I know that you probably don't believe me that 3 plus root 3 times 3 minus root 3 is equal to 6, so let's go through that process, all right? Just to make sure that you're all believers, that you can do this quickly as well <clears throat> when you need to. So 3 plus root 3 times 3 minus root 3, first, 9. Outside, 3 times 3. Outside, 3 minus 3 root 3. Inside, plus 3 root 3 minus root 3 squared. So minus 3 plus 3 reduces to 0. 9 minus <clears throat> root 3 squared is going to be 3. So 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. See, I showed you. All right, so let's move on to the last problem, number 6. I have 1 plus root 3 times 5 plus root 3. Again, I have a radical in the denominator. And let me just uh, erase this question number 5 to create more space. So I end up with 1 plus root 3 over 5 plus root 3 times the conjugate of the denominator, which is 5 minus root 3 over 5 minus root 3. Okay, so let's tackle the numerator first, and we're going to tackle it on this side. So I have 1, I'm going to use my foiling method, 1 times 5, right? So I have this value here times this value here. So first, 1 times 5 is 5. Outside, 1 times root 3 is negative root 3. Inside, root 3 uh, times 5 is plus 5 root 3. And then the last, <clears throat> minus 3 root squared, which is going to be minus, I'm sorry, minus root 3 squared, which is going to be just minus 3. Okay, so I have 5. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, combine like terms. 5 minus 3 is going to be equal to 2. Minus root 3 plus 5 root 3, that's going to be equal to plus 4 root 3. That's my numerator. 
Okay, in the denominator, <clears throat> again, I have a squared minus b squared, or 25 minus 3 root 3 squared, which is going to be equal to 3. So I end up with 22, and I put that in the denominator, and then here is my answer for number 6. Okay, moving on to the next set of problems. Uh, for number 7 and 8, we're going to provide either the positive or negative solution of the given equation. So all we're going to do is we're going to solve for x. So what I want to do is I want to set this equal to 0. I'm sorry, I want to uh, get x on one side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. I have x squared is equal to, excuse me, 1. And then I know that, <clears throat> so 13 minus 12. So x is going to be equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is just 1, so I have x is equal to plus or minus 1. Second equation, again, I'm going to get the x all on its own. So I'm going to isolate x. 2x squared, I'm going to add 1 to both sides, is equal to 8. x squared <clears throat> is equal to 4. And then I know x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4, or x is equal to plus or minus 2. Okay, and the last uh, problem, we have a word problem, and it's in relation to an object that's being dropped from uh, some height. <clears throat> so when an object is dropped, its height h can be determined after t seconds by using the following object model. The height is equal to negative 16 t squared plus s, where s is the initial height. Okay, so let's draw what this is going to look like. I have, let's say, just some building here, and here is the ground. And here is someone throwing something from this building to the ground. So this distance here <clears throat> from the ground to the platform at the top is going to be equal to s. And h in this case is going to be the ground. It's going to be equal to 0. So the confusing part of this might be just to realize that the height h is just 0. It's just the ground level. Now height could be 10 feet below 0, in which case it would be negative 10. But in most cases, h is just going to end up being 0. Okay, so we have all we need in order to solve for t, which is the amount of time it's going to take to drop. So I have h, which is equal to 0, is equal to negative 16 t squared, and again we're looking for t, plus s, which we determined was 100 square feet. All right, so we're going to isolate t all on its own. We're going to subtract 100 from both sides. I have uh, minus 100 is equal to negative 16 t squared. And then I divide by 16. I have negative 100 over negative 16, which ends up being positive 100 over positive 16 is equal to t squared. And then I can rewrite that as t is equal to the square root of 100 over 16. Now we learned previously that using the quotient property we can rewrite that as the square root of 100 over the square root of 16. And we know the square root of 100 is equal to 10. And we know the square root of 16 is equal to 4. So we end up with t is equal to 5 over 2 or 2 and a half seconds. <clears throat>